um, the number of suggestions. Okay. And then you just pick a number and then we just go, man. Uh, whatever you want to do. A lot of them have been like mo these uh, mono scenes. Yeah. I, yeah. I've been watching them. They're great. Oh, thanks. But it doesn't, it could be whatever you want. Okay. So if you, yeah, if you want to jump around or whatever you want to do, man, go for it. It'll be great. great. Cool. And then we'll, um, we'll talk a little after, like, I, I usually just figure out like, Hey, how, how did you, how did you get into improv? And, um, uh, like, how do you use it now? And, and, you know, anything like that. So great. Cool. we'll have a little, we'll have a little chit chat, my friend. Love it. Uh, uh, let's see. Let me figure out. Look at this. Look at this. We're it, buddy. Look yeah. at we this. <laughs> um, well, we have 19 suggestions. So pick a number one to 19. Let's go with lucky number 13. All right. Number 13. But, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Ooh, this is from Nathaniel, my buddy, and it is losing at halftime. Our suggestion is losing at halftime. Okay, great. Thanks, Nathaniel. Uh, I yeah. don't know what happened. I mean, it just, it started bad, man, and it ended worse. And in the middle, somehow was worse than the beginning and the end. What are we doing? I'll be honest, my head is not in the game right now. I've been thinking about, oh, there's so much that's going on. I can't even tell you. I mean. I get it, man. I get it. Divorce is hard, but I, 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 I need you to focus up. And I also need you to not take all the blame because it's my fault too. I'm just as bad out there. I'm just as bad. Maybe if I just give her a call. No, no, no. Let me just. No, me we just, talked about this. Let me just hold on. Let me just give her. A no, no, call. no, no, Bruce, 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 Bruce. He's gonna call her. He's gonna call her. He's gonna get. She's gonna get so pissed, and he's gonna get upset, and he's gonna come back crying. You okay, Bruce? Are you okay? Oh. She hung up. She picked up and hung I, up. Of course she picked up and hung up and she literally told you that is what she was going to do. Oh, Terry, why, why can't I just get past this? My sister is a bitch. I told you that when you started dating her, I told you that when you married her, and I told you that when you divorced her. Oh, I just feel like if only she would recognize me for who I am. Hey, buddy. Yeah. And who recognizes for you for who you are? All those people out there. And me. I feel like I knew every time, every time you were going to get sacked and I couldn't say anything. I'm like, I got to be, I'm protecting him. I'm protecting him. And then I just thought him, whose brother to her, who was no longer a part of my life. <laughs> oh, God, why? <laughs> Bruce, are you, are you letting me get sacked out there? Cause you, it, it hurts. Like it doesn't, it doesn't feel good when you get tackled. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's the, uh, I guess I am. I guess my head's not in the game and it's happening and it's so bad. And I just, okay. 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 <sighs> no, 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 <laughs> no. Bruce, come on, do the count of three, count of three. We know, we know what we do here. Yeah. I'm going to give her a call. No, no, no. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Bruce, Bruce, there are other people in this locker room. You're embarrassing yourself. Oh, God. I'm sorry. Oh. And what happened? She hung up. She hung up on you. It's like... It's like I'm allowing myself to get sacked now. I know she's going to hang up. Oh, God. Bruce, I need you to focus here. It hurts. It hurts, Terry. It hurts so much. I know. I know it hurts. But we are Buffalo Bills. 
We're winners. We're what always been winners. winners. We win every challenge we meet, we overcome. When people think winners, that's what they think of. They think Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Bills, that's right. Well, God, I mean, and, and to, for this to happen in the Super Bowl, of all the times where we've had our most success hey, is in the Super Bowl. I, I, we, are, we are known Super Bowl champions, which means <laughs> – we will overcome this 42 to nothing deficit and we will come back, but I just need you to focus up. I need you to put your cell phone away, break it, turn it off, do something and stop calling my sister. I'm a, but you know what, Terry, that's a great call. I'm a focus the here and now. I mean, even though as Buffalo Bills, we come to the Super Bowl every year. Every year. I'm going to put, I'm going to put, I'm putting my cell phone away right now. I'm turning it. Hang on. Hang oh, Bruce. On. Bruce, don't. Hi. No, if you could, I just want, listen, I need. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Bruce, you ever heard that expression, you know, fool me once, shame on you. you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. There's not a there's not an expression for fool me seven times, is there, Tear? No, there's not. There, there's not. And that's that's only the amount of times that you know she cheated on you. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why did I find out today? And you know what? The fact that she cheated on me now against uh, you know, the, the guy I'm blocking. I mean, how ironic is it? How ironic, and, and it's, he's in my head. He's in my head, Terry, and he's not gonna be in my head. Bruce, I get it, I get it, I get it. And there's, look, there's, I wish I could give you some advice on, on how to get past it, but realistically, yeah. you're gonna get beat every, every single play. Every single play, he's, he's fucking you, he's fucking your wife. Oh, God. Why? <laughs> Will you give me a hug? Of course. Come here. Bring it in. Come here. Yeah. I'm so sorry. No, no. You you don't you don't need you don't need I'm to be not, sorry. You don't sorry. it's not I'm worthless. Hey. I'm worthless. I should I I I, I shouldn't even be paid to carry your, your jock strap. I'm worthless. I'm gonna have a little talk with coach. And maybe maybe you ride the bench the rest of the game. Maybe you just maybe you just take a seat. Oh God. You know who loved the bench? Uh, she I did. <laughs> she loved anything that was like a bench. We had a bench in our backyard. She loved that. It's, um, um, it's a weird, it's a weird like, Bruce. It's, yes. it's, it's not a memory you need to be thinking about. Uh, but it makes sense. Oh. Hey, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Buddy. She's not worth it. You are a professional football player, the most respected person in American history. You're you're bi you're bigger than a scholar. You're you're a you're a you're a, you're a billion dollar player. You know what I mean, buddy? Yeah. You're an offensive lineman. Yes. The, the most glue. heralded of all positions. The glue that holds this team together. That's right. Come on, buddy. What do they say in Buffalo? They say we are champions no matter what the score is. That's correct. So I don't care that it's 42 nothing. I just care that my buddy Bruce is feeling okay. <sighs> the thing is, uh huh. this is only halftime. Yeah. I put my head back in this game. Uh huh. Even if I'm riding the bench, uh huh. I can help this team out. That is the Bruce I know. That is the Bruce I went to high school with. The Bruce I went to college with. That's the Bruce I want by my side. Give me that pep talk, Terry. Give me one of your pep talks. Okay, Bruce. Here's the thing. Who were you named after? Bruce Springsteen. Yes. The, the boss. boss. Yeah. Who are you going to be today? The boss. Because you were born to. Run, hang on, Bruce. Hang on, hang on a second. Run. Hang on. Oh, my God. Oh, 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 God. O
Bruce, Bruce, give me your phone, Bruce. Just give me, just give me the phone. Give me the phone. She, she sent me an emoji, though. It's of us. A custom emoji of you? Of course, of course she did. That's her thing. She, she's I, playing mind games with you. Give me your phone. Take it. Take it. Don't let me have that phone. Even, you know what? Even after today, don't let me have that phone. Okay. We I will are, make that deal with you. We're Buffalo Bills. We're the pinnacle of sports. The pinnacle of sports. I do it for the front of the jersey, not the back of the jersey. Get, oh. Finish, finish your, finish it, Terry. Finish your motivational speech to me right now. I need it, buddy. I'm the boss. The boss. You're the boss, and like every good boss, you are going to take advantage of your employees. And who are those employees? The crowd. You're going to take advantage. You're going to let the crowd, you're going to let that cheering, you're going to let that, that, that the, the Buffalo Bills fans, you're going to let it fire you. You're going to let it, it burn the embers inside you. You're going to go out there and you're going to light that field on fucking fire. Come on, everybody. Bills. Bills. Bills, 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 let's do this. Come on, buddy, let's get out there. Can I see the, no, I don't want to no. see the phone. No. Let's go. Scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, it was super fun. Dude, oh, I, you're so fun because like you jump right into it, no matter what it is. Yeah. And you just find the elements of play. Like, have you always been that way? Like, do you, do, do you, since when you started, have you felt like, oh, let's do it. Now's the time. Let's find that fun. You know, uh, yes, but because of circumstances. So I started uh, in a short form troop in New uh. Jersey when I was 16 years old. And it was like, and, and, and we played to crowds of 100 to 200 kids every like I buy like high school yeah you know 15 to, to 20 year olds because then they were 21 and went to the bars but it's the only thing to do on the jersey shore on the weekends so thursday friday saturday night I, like i performed over 3,000 shows before i even turned 30. um and it was one of those things where you had to bring it right away because kids yeah. have the you know as i got older the attention spans got shorter yes. so <laughs> Um, it was just about getting in there and doing it. And, and that's, and that's the most fun thing for me regardless. Yeah. And I it mean, doesn't mean play fast. I actually enjoy playing slower than I, you know, but, but it is about getting in there and doing it, you know? Well, I think, I mean, it is, you, you slow down, you, you slow down, but also you don't hesitate. That's mm -hmm. what it is. You're just yeah. like, I'm making this move and we're going this way. And, and. Uh, there's no better audience than kids because they will say, you know, they'll be like, we're bored. Do something. Like, you have no time to see if they, you have to tell them this is what we're doing. And, and you have to be able to read the room. And how important is that skill, man, of being able to read that room? Oh, absolutely. You know, and, and then just going, you know, going from that short form. And then I studied with Armando Diaz in New York. And then it, it was just like, it was the exact opposite. It was just like, slow it down. Um, and then, and those audience, so it is, I, I feel like finding the medium in all of those scenarios is a really great way to go. How, how did you get to improv? Like what made you start taking classes and performing? And I had a, um, a substitute teacher who had performed, uh, down at the SAC theater with Jonathan Mangum, uh, and a bunch of those guys. So I saw, I watched Jonathan's. So I, I've known Jonathan since I was a teenager because this guy was him and Jonathan were best friends. Uh, he had a family issue came, went from Florida to New Jersey and came back home and was like, well, I'm going to start something up in New Jersey. And so he was my substitute teacher. And he's like, all right, dude, yeah, I know you think you're funny in class, but come take these classes. And, it was, I was immediately thrown into this world of like, cause I was, a, I was a jock. I was a soccer player. Um, and I, but when I was younger, younger, I was, always, I was always in the school place and, but I was too concerned about being cool. So I stopped right. doing it. Um, <laughs> and then I was like, Oh wait, this is like the perfect combination of being cool. Cause it was like this, it was the nineties. So it was this 
counterculture that we had. We were performing in like, you know, coffee shops and yeah. stuff. Yeah, and it was yeah, yeah. a cool thing to do. So luckily yeah. my ego let me do it. And then that ego finally got dropped. <laughs> <laughs> well, and also, I mean, being an athlete, coming from that realm of you're part of this team, I think added so much to making that transition to improv because it's a group sport. Absolutely it is. Yeah. And especially with that um, short form, you are so want to just tell the joke and it's an easy thing to do. Yeah. But a good performer does not do that. Um, and and he, he does think of it as a team sport. And so like, it really, it really did help. It helped a lot. Now you book out at like you, you're, you're a work, one of the working actors in, in LA. One of the ones I know that you're, you're constantly working and you're booking, whether it's like commercials or series or whatever it is. How has improv helped you in your career now? It has done so many things. First of all, the confidence walking into a room. I don't get nervous anymore. Like it yeah. used to be, cause I know any audition is just an audition. Like nothing is gonna make or break my career in any way, shape or form more than anything else. So just going in there with confidence. And then the other thing is just, you know, a director wants you to be able to adapt and change because mm. if he or she changes her mind on set you need to do the same thing so um the ease in which you are able to adapt is so important on any set and are you i'm assuming that you're also somebody now because you've been doing this for a while that casting directors or directors or or you know uh people who are working with you know that you have that skill like they're like I oh p so. yeah he can improvise yeah yeah i think so and i i, I think you know, a lot of the working actors that you see now, especially now, have come up through the improv ranks. If like, if you go back, I mean, the people that we have worked with for the yeah. last 10, 15 years are really the people breaking in right now, which is great. It's great to see. I mean, it's, isn't it crazy coming from the, the 90s to now see where improv is, especially, I mean, you've been in LA a lot longer than I have, but seeing the transition of how it's become a necessity for actors in this town, and it, it never was Absolutely. as much. Absolutely, and, and you know, and it used to be like, people would go and take a level one class at a theater and, uh, and, and then put it on the resume and think that that was enough. But I think the skill set is actually showing through now, which is fantastic. Are you ever considering teaching again? Like you used to teach improv and- I used and... to teach a lot. Uh, I burnt, I, so I taught again, uh, you know, in some capacity since I was a teenager mm. all the way up until, you know, a couple of years ago. And I kind of got burned out on it. Um, mostly because it's, it's a hard thing to do uh, uh, money versus time. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I'm married. Uh, I, I, we have our own production company. I am auditioning. I still need to put food on the table, uh, that type of stuff. So um, it was it was hard. And the other thing that was frustrating for me was, um, and maybe I let it get to be this way, but I felt like LA was being very LA. Like people would not show up for three classes, but then really want to do the show. And you're just like, oh, come on, man. Just <laughs> make yourself for th six weeks. It's You just dropped 300 bucks on this class. But I have found myself really missing uh, missing, I, I miss teaching. I miss having students that like uh, to watch them grow and, and giving them that bit of insight. Yeah, you, you uh, among other places you taught, it used to be at Westside and mm -hmm. I've met people who have talked about you as a teacher and have been like, is he teaching anymore? And I go, I don't think so. And I, uh, you know, I think he's, you know, you're working a ton, but uh, it makes sense to say, uh, I, I laughed when you said, oh, it's so LA to be like, why why did you spend all this money on a class that you either show up really late to or just don't show up and then you're like i'm gonna do i'm gonna do the show like i didn't experience that in any other places i've, I've taught at a absolutely and I, I don't think people here are any different or worse than any other people anywhere else it's just um i don't know whether it is you know i guess the traffic is one of the things but everyone is really grinding here yes uh, and so that grind sometimes get in, gets in the way. Uh, but for me, the education, that, that foundation is so important. Huge. Um, and, and people just, they blow right by it. And that's why I feel like you see actors that will book a show because uh, you know they had a great audition or they look a certain way. 
And then their careers just go like that because they just don't have the foundation. Yeah. What would, what would you tell people? Because, you know, when I was in, when I was in Chicago, people would go through second city or they do, you know, classes or shows, or whatever. Then they're like, I'm going to move to LA. And it's like, well, you don't have, you don't really have a ton of TV and film experience. And so they would, they were kind of hit with a, a reality when they got here of like, Oh, because in Chicago improv so huge. Right. And yeah, everyone's right. like, that's the goal. But what would you suggest to people who are, who are do, taking improv classes or doing shows in other cities and they do want to go to LA to be an actor, um, but they don't necessarily have like a ton of TV or film right now, but they're like, Oh, I really enjoy doing this. I want to make people laugh or, or I want to be an actor. Yeah. What would you tell them to do? I think there's two options. There's one, go to an Atlanta or a New Orleans or mm. even a New York and get some credits under your belt. Yeah. Or two, uh, do what I did, like come out here wide. And I didn't move out here till I was 30. Um, so, I, you know, I moved out a little bit later in the game and I was killing it in New York. And I just, it was bad timing. I moved out in 2007. I booked something and the writers went on strike. And so that <laughs> thing never happened. And so it, I had to start again from the very bottom. Um, mm. Because then no one, at that point, no one cared about my New York TV and film credits. Now right. they hold a little bit more weight, but uh, they didn't then. Um, but I, I think a part of it, I, the grind is important too. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with getting into classes, going to whatever casting director workshops are still going on. Because now, you know, the ones that are should all be legit. Um, That's a whole nother conversation. Yeah, yeah. I, that was the worst. <laughs> um <laughs> But uh, I, I think the grind and the, uh, the disappointment really builds character and really will make you appreciate those moments on set. I mean, don't, it's a callus, right? You have to build it up. You have to go, you have to, your job as an actor, I think, is to audition and you have to go through it. And, and like you said, you have to build it up. So it's not every time you don't get an audition, you're just devastated it's like no that's just one of of a bunch i have to do a hundred percent you know recently within the last two or three years uh i started rock climbing and this is give, give me a second on this one no i <laughs> metaphor dude it's a <laughs> metaphor it's a so, metaphor yes yes so uh i'm again i was an athlete and i was an athlete that excelled very quickly at most things that i did when i was younger yeah but I'm 40, and that's when I started rock climbing, is when I was 40 years old. Well, that's um, what they say to do, at 40, right. pick up rock yeah, climbing. Yes, exactly, and, and so uh, now I'm 43, so I've been, I, I've been at it for about three years. But I remember just go, going in there and being like, oh, I'm humbled mm. to the utmost extent because I'm watching kids and uh, dudes that are like, you know, scr scrawnier than me or whatever, yes, maybe yes. flying up these walls and I'm doing terribly. <laughs> and I thought about it and it, I really did relate it to, to acting at the time because, you know, mm. even when I would excel, I would get, you know, you, I, I would become a level five climber or whatever. Yeah. And, and then plateau there. And I, I compared it a lot to my acting career in that like you are gonna have your struggles. There are times when you're gonna excel, there are times when you're gonna plateau. And the only thing you can do is push past it and get stronger and every little bit helps. Ah, oh, dude, that's such a powerful metaphor, man. And it's momentum, right? It's just keep doing it and keep doing it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, now, and now we've got things like, like you're actually working on com commercials in your own home and yeah. so, that's how things are happening with the quarantine now is you're, you're not even having to leave your house. So there's no reason also you don't pick up your cell phone and go, I'm going to record this bit. I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to get comfortable being on a camera. I'm going to see what I look like. And I'm going to take this moment to do like a, a quick, whether it gets shown or not, doesn't matter, but just to get used to being around a camera too. Yeah, man. Look, the, the first few months of this, uh, cause we didn't know how long I thought it was going to last six to eight weeks. Right. And then, uh, so, uh, but my wife and I both challenged ourselves to any challenge a casting director was putting out there online. We did because yeah. I didn't want to lose the reps. It's all about, it's, it's all about the reps. Yes. Um, and I saw, because now I had the time to not just put my audition on tape, but now I had the time to watch it and analyze it and watch yeah. it again and do it again. And, and so my acting got a hundred times better <laughs> since being in quarantine. And so, uh, you know, I, I feel like people, we've all been 
at least I know I have, asking for this time. I wish yes. I had more time. Like, yes. you're, you're part of the grind too. You know, you, we're yes. constantly moving, constantly working. Now that I have time, why am I not strengthening my skills? I mean, I, I keep thinking like, was this quarantine, like, my, my ego is like, this was directed at me. This was told, this happened because I needed to slow it. I get it. Like it was specifically for me right. because there was so much of this and not just like, like you're saying, running around in the grind, but sometimes feeling that the grind is like, I'm not moving. I'm just going in this over and over and, and it's given now time to pause. And, and, you know, of course there's the devastation that's been happening. I don't want to minimize that, but just speaking in terms of this, of like, yeah wow, it's actually allowed me to, like you said, focus on what I'm doing, get better at it, see what's happening, look at these opportunities. And then it's, it's set the playing field. Nobody, who, who has been doing productions inside their home? Very right. few, if any. Right. But now it's like, I got to hop in, I got to get on board right at the start. Like early in March, I'm like, I got to start figuring out how to do stuff online because that's just going to be another tool in my belt. Uh, and if not, it's going to pass me by. Yeah, 100%. And look, again, we're not spring chickens. We're, you know, we're not coming in here as, as 20 something year olds. So it is just about like, hey, look, look at how I can adapt and, and look at how I continue to get better. And I don't think there's any end to that. I don't think any real artist in any art form is ever like, I'm done. I'm at the, I'm at the top of my game. If, if so, you're not an artist. You, you, you're constantly trying to adapt and get better. So I, I just think that this is, uh, it, it is awful what's happening. But there are ways, and I'm not even saying take advantage of it. There are ways that we can just be a part of it, and and I think we're both doing a pretty good job. I hope. Yeah, for sure. And 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 you know, when I first moved to LA, you and and uh, Aaron Krebs had this studio that was part of this idea you have of like the grind, and you would bring in people, and we would be able to take workshops, and and. I took an on camera class, not with a desire to necessarily do on camera work, but just to see like part of it was I had taught one in Chicago. So I'm like, shit, was I right? <laughs> but I took a couple classes with that studio you had. So like that opportunity you afforded a lot of people early on, like, I hope you know what a what a positive situation that was and you put people in a position to succeed and you had the wall of work where people would write like the gigs they did and it was it was so empowering to go to a place and have that uh and and to learn from from people where you you were able to bring in people who were in the industry saying hey here's here's some things that can help you and i think those those opportunities also fostered relationships. And I think it's all about relationships and who you meet and you never like treat people well, you never know. And you should just want to treat people well, but especially in this situation to, to find ways to connect with people. And for me, this is one of them is like, oh, Pete and I haven't done, we've done a couple shows together, but man, I, I, you know, and I've always had that thought of like, oh, I wish we could do a show together and thinking about that. But now this gave us a chance to do that. So I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, I, and, and thank you for saying that about the studio. That was, uh, it was, it was just a passion that both Aaron and I and my wife, uh, Ashley, had, because uh, she was a huge part of that too. And we all have that same mindset. <laughs> wow. Sorry, it's just, it's just a cat destroying. And <laughs> that's totally fine. Just... Um, we all have that same mindset that uh, uh, we're, you're not in, you're not in this by yourself. Yeah. If you aren't part of this this team, this community, then I think you're doing it wrong. Or, or and if you're not doing it wrong, in the end, you're going to be miserable because you don't want to be sitting on the top of your hill in your mansion by yourself. You, want, <laughs> you know, uh, you don't want to be Citizen Kane. You you want to you want to be you want to have a family. You want to be with these people. So um, I don't see it any other way than bringing everyone around. It, I mean, it's a it's a tenet of improv, isn't it? Like. Yeah. You know, you look at, you make everyone else look good along with yourself. And, yes. and then you have the support system because this isn't easy. Uh, look, again, I'm 43 years old. I'm still pursuing acting. What, like, what do I tell, do, do I tell my 18 year old self, like this is lonely and it's hard and it's awful, or I've made the best friends along the way. I regret nothing. This journey is just part of there. This is just yeah. part of the journey and the destination is going to be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and I mean, you nailed it. I think the older you get, the more you're like, this is just a journey. There's no destination. The thing I thought it was changes all the time. Uh, can I be of service? Can I help other people? Like I watched Ashley's video. She put a video out about just like self tape and like, 
and but I think it's good for anyone who is going to be in virtual meetings, let alone actors, to be like, yeah. hey, look at your lighting, look at the mic, look at the background, like all of that stuff. I think are just huge um, pieces of advice that you can find online from people who are like, look, I'm going to give this back to you, and they don't look at it. She doesn't look at it like. I got to hoard this information. You don't look at it like I got to hoard information. It's like, no, I got to give it away. And if this helps someone cool, there's enough. It's the gratitude and you know, the, the plentiful mindset of like, there's going to be enough for everyone. It's not, I don't have to look at this as, as people are a threat to me. Absolutely. She's agreeing and cheering off, off camera, by the way. <laughs> um, uh, I wish a part of me was like, Oh, I hope you picked number one because it was her suggestion. And it was uh, something like, oh, I'm going to, uh, I'm totally going to tune in or something like that. And I was like, oh, that would have been a funny one to choose. <laughs> um, I almost did it just to make it easier for you because uh, I, I watch in every episode where you're like, hold on, let me count. And so I should have done that. Well, Pete, we've done a um, 500,000 person market research study and they overwhelmingly, the number one uh, thing people tune in for is to listen to me count the suggestions. So. You know, I did read that study. It's, it's, it's very eye-opening. <laughs> Um, where can people, if they want to get a hold of you, if they want to, you know, follow what you're doing, or if they want to reach out to you, bring you in and, and work with you on a project or, or anything like that, what's the best way people can get a hold of you? Uh, across all social media, it's just my name, Pete Capella, a cappella without the A. Um, and yeah, and I pretty much kind of update everything on there. So that's the best way. Oh. Pete you're the best, my friend. I'm so, I'm so thankful you took time out. I can't wait to play with you again, whether it's like live or another virtual thing. But we are will we going to be able to play live at any point in, <laughs> in our lives again? Well, dude, I want to do an improv show at a drive-in movie theater. I want to do. Oh, that's a so, great idea. Or do it on a street corner or something. So I'm trying to. I, I saw a, a jazz trio in a uh, in a garage. They had a driveway and people were just putting lawn chairs around. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way to do it like that. So I think well, it's going to be possible. Please let me know. I'm, I, I would love to help. Oh, you're the best. Give my best to Ashley and I'll talk to you soon, my friend. I love you, bud. Love yes. you. Bye. Bye.